you're here, things can still get back on track. So it looks like you're not in the best condition. I'm Dr. Finnegan. Welcome to my hotel. Hey my fellow friend sets, it's Chris from Shughead Gaming and here's my review for Awake In, developed and published by VR Bros and releasing for Steam VR this February 25th for $20. Of course, that depends on your region. You wake up as a human-sized doll in an abandoned retro-style hotel where apparently something bad has happened in the past. Who are you and how did you find yourself in this creepy place? Confined to a wheelchair and surrounded by an army of living dolls, your only connection to the real world is a mysterious voice over a shortwave radio. Oozing with atmosphere and mystery, this horror-esque puzzler looks to be something really special. Stick around while I tear it apart and find out if that's the case. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out my channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, make sure you hit that bell icon. And one more quick shout out, I have another channel with Ryan from the VR Grid. It is called the Virtual Boys Podcast. And as you guessed it, it's a VR podcast where Ryan and I like to talk about the real things happening in the VR world. So check us out on our new channel, the Virtual Boys Podcast, and you could also enter for the chance to win a quest too. But enough promotional bullshit, let's kick things off with a look at graphics. One of the first things that likely jumped out at you if you've seen the previous trailers for Awaken is that it certainly is not an ugly game. With an art style that leans hard into old art deco with some steampunk influences thrown in for good measure, Awake In immediately impresses in the headset. With a level of detail and atmosphere that brought to mind Shades of the Bioshock series in not only its visual style, but also its focus on smaller set pieces that go for lore building character and nuance over grand designs, which of course works really well in VR. The majority of your time here will see you exploring the tight confines of this four-story boutique hotel. Visual variety here is not a strong point of the game, but it does make up for this with a heavy emphasis on making the various wings, hallways, and rooms of the hotel feel unique, mysterious, and, well, not safe. This is accomplished mostly in part due to the game's excellent use of lighting, as much of the hotel is bathed in minimal light or outright darkness, which gives the game a decidedly creepy ambiance that horror fans are sure to appreciate. Now, much of the lighting here outside of your personal flashlight is baked into the game's textures and not dynamic, but it's done really well here and rarely impacts the overall effect. Graphical prowess here, of course, does depend on your PC's capabilities, but the game scales well visually to lower-powered hardware, with anti-aliasing and a reduction in bloom effects being the real standouts that take a hit. Unfortunately, the game only provides a single graphic slider and hence does make the decisions for you on what visual aspects to prioritize, something I'm not a huge fan of. Unfortunately though, Awake In is a game that really felt like it needed more time to be optimized, for despite its pretty visuals, Awake In is plagued with a sense of just never being a smooth and polished experience while moving through the world in your wheelchair, a point that is mostly felt when turning. For regardless of whether the effect was intentional or not, it always felt kind of jerky and visually uncomfortable. As of March 3rd and the recording of this review, a performance patch has been added in, which makes the game's more severe framerate issues less of an issue. However, there's certainly room for more improvement. Overall frame rates often felt just only serviceable and often came to a crashing halt when the game would attempt to load a new area mid-gameplay that would often result in the game jumping back and forth between the on-screen game and the Steam VR loading screen. Yeah. Unfortunately, this lack of polish and smoothness of gameplay greatly hindered my enjoyment of what is undeniably a really nicely designed and impressive looking game. With new builds being updated the week before release, this certainly showed that the developers were committed to the game, but unfortunately it also reeks of a title that would have benefited from some more development time, or at least just an early access label. Sound is up next. Ah, the temple of progress, windmill for humanism.
Similar to its visuals, Awake In's audio design is rich with detail and atmosphere, giving the game a real sense of quality and care while it builds a truly immersive world around you. Music here is used very sparingly and treated like a soundtrack in a good thriller. Instead of being front in the mix, it often sits far back in the mix and takes more of an ambiance role, giving a sense that the hotel is a breathing and living entity. Akin to something like the sound design in the Paranormal Activity movies, where the music sits in the background adding an almost pressure or presence to the moment. Alternatively, when the music does rear its head, it does so to communicate moments of threat, and as such can be very effective in ratcheting up the tension. I wouldn't call this a horror game per se, uh, but its soundtrack sure thinks it is. And in keeping with this ideology, the audio design here puts the focus on the tiny sound details, such as the sound of your chair's wheels rolling across the floor, hence making every move you make feel uncomfortably loud, a point that actually becomes a prominent gameplay mechanic, but is never capitalized like it could have been, but more of that in the gameplay section. Again, much like the Bioshock series, the world is filled with audio throwbacks to a post-World War II era, coming in the form of music and most prominently conversations over shortwave radio in which much of the game's narrative is delivered. Voice work throughout is handled very well, mind you, and certainly helps to elevate the entire vibe of the game. All in all, quality sound mix here that expertly delivers all the world detail, nuance, and atmosphere you would hope from a game in this genre, and it often stands out as one of the game's strongest assets. And that brings us to gameplay. The setup is simple. You wake up as a living doll strapped to a wheelchair. Well, I, I guess that's simple. Let loose in a seemingly abandoned hotel, you must go up and down the elevator searching the hotel's four floors for a way out and answers to just what the hell's going on. During my playthrough of Awake In, I was trying to figure out what type of a game this was. With its creepy and dark atmosphere coupled with stalking enemies coming in the form of living dolls, it very much feels and plays like a horror game but at the same time, it never fully commits to scaring you, as the janky-looking flailing dolls, while terrifying at first, quickly lose their threatening demeanor and come off more like puppets just glitching out on their strings. In numbers, these can certainly take you out, but a few swipes with the underdeveloped melee system and you will likely just be on your way, which consequently deems the game's stealth mechanics more often than not just completely unnecessary. As a result, we're left with a game that is creepy but runs out of ideas too soon to be terribly scary. A melee system that is something more akin to whack-a-mole, and a stealth mechanic that is rarely necessary to use. Fortunately, Awake In is also a mystery story told through a system of fairly simple puzzles, just hard enough to make you stop and think. This is certainly not a puzzle game by any real means, but instead uses real-world barriers like broken equipment and barricade paths as stop points that need to be figured out in order to advance the story. And as I'm not a puzzle guy, I appreciated this more pragmatic approach to the in-game puzzles as it made exploration and the telling of the narrative its primary focus, rather than just stumping the player on complex puzzles to the point of frustration. The gameplay itself, as you have likely realized already, is influenced heavily by the fact that you're wheelchair-bound, and hence must navigate the world, taking into account the limitations that come along with that. Your chair comes loaded with a small inventory box for which you can hold puzzle items and the all-important battery packs, which power on your onboard flashlight, among other things. And as a side note, batteries run out fast, so you're, go you're gonna be collecting these. In addition, your chair can also holster one melee weapon. Now, the wheelchair gameplay mechanic I actually thought was quite a brilliant way to mitigate VR sickness while offering up a unique style of locomotion, much in the way that Phantom Covert Ops expertly used its rowing mechanic. Unfortunately, in practice, the wheelchair controls like crap, with the manual hand controls simply feeling too jerky and rapid in their implementation, making the optional joystick controls certainly the method of choice here. Unfortunately, the wheelchair physics just never felt right and lacked any sense of weight transfer. Most importantly though, while likely sounding like a fascinating and unique idea on paper, navigating the world with the limitations of being in a wheelchair actually just took the already cumbersome VR mechanics of opening and closing drawers and picking up items off the floor and made them even clunkier. This is aided somewhat with the optional extension clause that you can switch to, but ultimately the game's wonky physics and hit detection systems just do not do the game any favors here, and ultimately just make the whole control scheme just feel clunky. And yeah, you would think that being tied to a wheelchair would help with VR sickness, but unfortunately it doesn't really. For in practice, the janky turning of the wheelchair and the less than spectacular frame rates simply don't make for an overly comfortable VR experience. That being said though, height control, click turning, optional teleportation, and blinders are here for those who need them, so most should be able to play this without too much of an issue. And that brings me to Fun Factor in my final review. Awake In is a game that I was moderately excited to play, as everything I saw pointed to a high quality VR title with good visuals, some cool ideas, and an interesting premise. And you know what? It has all of those things. Unfortunately, it also has performance issues, clunky underdeveloped controls, and a lot of good ideas that just don't always mesh nor feel fully realized. As you guys may know, I hate numbered review scores, and instead rate games on a basis of buy it, burn it, or wait on it, as well as a little information on who this game might appeal to a little bit more. 
For the asking price of $20, Awaken isn't really asking for a huge amount of money for admission to what could be a fantastically creepy and interesting VR tale. And yes, I would certainly play this, but not yet. It's simply not ready and plays more like an early access title than a finished product. The potential is huge here, but the game needs a little more time in the oven to balance its gameplay, tweak its control system, and optimize its performance. If you liked the world building and the vibe of Bioshock and fancy yourself a cool VR mystery with some light puzzle solving and combat, do yourself a favor and put this on your wish list and then just like wait four to six months. You'll be glad you did. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And hey, don't forget to check out the Virtual Boys podcast where you can subscribe and enter to win a Quest 2. In addition, I think you might actually like the podcast. Anyways, guys, catch you on my next video.